Kern is the 13th most populated of California's 58 counties, right behind San Francisco County. As our region grows, its citizens will have a responsibility as stewards of this bountiful landscape to visualize and plan for the future. Kern County residents have had the unique opportunity to participate in a regional forum that has encouraged an open dialogue about our future. The blueprint process is part of a larger effort in Central California to involve citizens and local officials in making informed decisions about the long-term vision for land use and growth. The purpose of the Blueprint program is to address how we're going to grow between now and 2050. Uh, the population of Kern County in the, say around the year 2030 is going to double. Uh, the population by 2050 is going to triple. And the, the big issues that we have to face are where are we going to accommodate all of these people will be approaching by 2050, we'll be approaching two million people in Kern County. So uh, it's very critical that we can start now and address how are we going to accommodate all these people. The, the Kern Regional Blueprint process is designed to create this vision first, um, and then we work with the 11 cities in the county in the planning process, uh, and then we begin to implement. We're not just looking at, at an individual city, we're actually looking at the entire 8,000 square miles of Kern County. We have the valley, we have the mountains, we have the desert, uh, we have different economies, we have oil, agriculture, we have the military, uh, we have uh, lots of ethnic groups, uh, we have lots of social groups uh, that, that all need to be involved in this process. The population of Kern County is changing where we are a more diverse county and um, you know we are very rich in um, culture and we actually need to think about how we're going to include other cultures that are represented in this county. I think uh, folks from the outside when they think of Kern County they think of cowboys and farmers and um, yes that is a, you know very part of our rich history but we also have you know new communities that are up and coming communities of color you know how do we really include um, these cultures these traditions into um, our future growth. In phase one of the blueprint process Kern residents were polled about both attitudes and perceptions regarding quality of life issues in their respective communities. Town hall meetings took place following a telephone survey on quality of life issues. The town hall meetings were held throughout the county in Tehachapi, Taft, Lamont, Arvin, Delano, Lake Isabella, Bakersfield, McFarland, Mojave, Ridgecrest, Shafter, and Wasco. KernCog's public outreach efforts resulted in a baseline of the public's values and visions that planners and decision makers can take into consideration as they shape our future. The interesting part about it is that there, some of the concerns, or a lot of the concerns, are pretty much the same wherever you are. Concerned about the quality of life issues, um, transportation, protecting our air quality, and our water resources, and, and all those things that are so important. And it doesn't matter what community it is, we all share a lot of those common, those common concerns. Over and over, um, every single person that was there was saying there's definitely a need for more affordable housing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of development that happens in our area is really focusing on, you know, single family homes, but we know that we really need to mix that in with, um, you know, low, for low income families. Agriculture continues to be the number one commodity, top five commodities actually in Kern County are agriculture, and so we know that that's a very important base that we have. So how are we going to accommodate, you know, our workers? The Blueprint's second phase was designed to educate participants about growth scenarios and principles. Using the values and issues identified in Phase 1, residents brainstormed and ultimately prioritized and ranked the importance of the different growth principles. Through a healthy dialogue, thought-provoking game pieces were used as tools to arrive at a group consensus. The game encouraged participation by all and fostered a spirit of cooperation. You know, definitely they um, have stated loud and clear that, you know, it's important to keep the agricultural land. Um, and for the folks who feel that, you know, Kern County has, um, you know, 
this dispensable amount of you know open space well no we are a growing population we do have folks that are moving here from Los Angeles trying to get out of you know the hustle and bustle of the metropolitan areas you know they're looking for cleaner air quality they're looking for open space they're looking for um, areas that they can actually um, have their physical activities uh, recreational activities and Kern County in particular I think affords individuals with uh, all those options. We want to keep our open spaces, we want to protect that because that's part of the beauty of our state. Uh, by controlling the growth into uh, our existing communities by uh, higher densities, uh, we can lessen the impact on, on habitat, uh, which in Kern County has a huge recreational value. Uh, and a lot of our economies are tied to, to that recreational value. We also have to take another look at the way we plan our communities. When I was growing up, I was able to walk to the grocery store, I was able to walk to school, uh, walk to the railroad station in Madera and places like that. You can't hardly do that anymore. We need to start looking at going back to a time when people uh, could walk and not have to use a car, not have to pay so much for uh, the gasoline that we use today. Uh, that's something that we can do that planners and developers and builders can all work together to make communities more livable and more in tune with the future. At the end of the Blueprint's second round process, the public had chosen a set of growth principles they felt comfortable with as a basis for future growth. The Blueprint process showed that the public wanted to protect airspace as well as agricultural and open land. It also established the importance of good air quality as one of the top priorities for Kern's residents. Participants agreed on a moderate level of development density, about 19 people per acre, as a model for planning to protect our existing resources. We are never going to get rid of the car or the single occupant vehicle. Um, we're going to go to electric, we're going to go to hybrid, but I think we can uh, overcome some of the growth in, in the single occupant vehicle by designing new neighborhoods and redesigning our existing neighborhoods uh, so that we have commercial, residential mixed together, uh, maybe uh, higher densities, uh, uh, having lofts in communities where we never thought we would talk about lofts. It's important to consider all aspects of planning for future growth, including the funding of infrastructure. Financial opportunities abound, but not without conditions. Having a sound plan and promoting well-considered growth principles are just some of the conditions that help attract funding sources. Funding follows a unified vision. I think if we continue to work in the vacuum as far as individual cities go, that we are going to miss the bigger picture. We need to be taking a look at the, you know, need to be reaching out to the community, you know, our county and our region, so that we we're able to work and to be providing the kind of communities that are going to enhance the quality of life for our citizens. This is our community and so it's up to we we're burdened with the task of making it a, a good livable community and one of those things the most important things to me is the infrastructure and that's public safety infrastructure that's roads infrastructures everything I mean because infrastructure is a very encompassing word I mean it includes a lot of different uh, aspects and so it's, I think it's incumbent to us to make it better for our kids by doing the right thing today. And so that 20, 30 years from now, they can look back and say, hey, this community was really planned out well. And there's a lot of communities that are like that, that have just been planned out very well. It took a little bit longer to do it, spent a little bit more money doing it, but they're planned out forever and they'll never have to go back and fix those things. And there's a lot of things that we can't fix that we had to live with from mistakes in the past but why repeat history like that? Why make the same mistakes for future generations to have to live with? Why not take a little bit bigger step, not be so myopic and look at today, look at what's going to be 30 years from now, and, and then take that step and, and make it that kind of community so that the future generations have that kind of community to live in that is safe, it's efficient, and, you know, and it's, it's everything that they need for a quality of life. I think. Uh Collectively, as, as a community of residents of, of the Kern County area, we need to uh, look at, at that 50-year vision of what our communities need to be like by beginning to work on it now and, and being engaged in the process and, and slowly working 
through the process of change that we can make uh, all of our communities better. We believe Kern Council of Governments has accomplished its goal, identifying a countywide vision. That vision presents numerous opportunities for communities to provide for sustainable growth while preserving the characteristics residents hold most dear.